Thank you, everyone, for being here. I have the very tough uh, task to make you not fall asleep after lunch. So uh, I'll do my best, but the tech uh, is not helping because the uh, internet connection doesn't work. So I will have to, you know, actually, you will, have, you, you will see more spin ball than I would like to. But uh, uh, maybe they will fix it while, while we start. So um, my name is Stefano Corazza. I'm the founder and uh, CEO of Mixamo. And today I'm going to talk about uh, fast pipelines to uh, create a rig and animate characters for your game. We are focused uh, on characters, and that's like 100% of our business, characters and character animation. And the main reason is because characters are such an essential part in communicating emotions. So if you think about the top if you take you know the top 20 games that are even like on the on the app store or you know console and so on uh, the vast majority of those games involve characters why is that is because characters are such an important part in uh, identifying ourselves with the hero or with the with the main uh, character of the game and then create that emotional connection that makes them want to play more so in the past years uh, we have worked on a lot of uh, projects. They were also very different and for different uh, uh, companies from AAA to TV. You know, we did uh, Jurassic Park, Spider-Man, uh, did uh, stuff for sports science, worked with Bjork on a, on a video. And then uh, last year, uh, you may, some of you guys may have seen this in the last uh, Unite keynote, we produced our own uh, animated short. There was the first uh, project using uh, Mechanim uh, blend shape support. And so by doing all these projects, we try to learn as much as possible and then take the fruit of this learning and, and, and the technology that we build uh, and take it to the, to the audience, to the indie developers, to you guys. So we're trying to do the best. Uh, as an example, uh, Unplugged, as I said, uh, brought the blend shape support and uh, also motion capture from a uh, simple camera that I will demo uh, later called Face Plus. Uh, Jurassic Park, uh, we develop um, a script to uh, create automatically a control rig for any character and be able to bake animations on the control rig, which at the time was like some crazy thing. And then we release it for free to the community. So we're trying to always you know, touch the, the, the top uh, uh, or, or do very interesting projects and then bring the fruits to, that, to the whole community. That's kind of how we operate. And so from your perspective, you start with an idea and you want to get to that point where you have a playable character in the game as fast as possible. And uh, also with a character that is as close as possible to your final design goal. And so we understand that and we try to do our best uh, to make that happen. And so if we break down the process in these four steps, uh, we have started uh, allowing you guys to animate characters easily. Then we realized rigging was a big problem. And so we uh, created the auto rigger. And then the last uh, problem that we tackled was uh, allowing easy modeling and texturing of characters. So most of them, my demo today was, will be based on that. And then uh, we are trying basically to solve all these questions that in the process of creating a game, uh, you guys are asking yourselves, there are so many decisions they are so important uh, um, at the beginning, they have so much effect later on. And so sometimes it's really hard to figure them all out because you know, things may change, design may change uh, uh, over time in the process. And so instead, another approach is to have very fast iterations. So you don't spend you know, a month trying to figure out all the variables that you will possibly uh, encounter down the road. You put something together really fast you get it through the cycle, and then all the problems pop up immediately, right? You don't want to realize, you know, in the last uh, week before shipping that, you know, your game is running at 15 frames per second and redo all the, uh, you know, textures and, and meshes of the, of the character. You want to find that out right away. And so instead of posing all those questions and trying to figure it out, I mean, they're good questions and they, I think you should ask yourself, but uh, you can also just go with fast iterations and then use as much as possible ready-to-go content. So that's what we're trying to do, uh, allowing people in 10 minutes to put something together, testing the game. Uh, some people are using our content for production. Some people are using for uh, you know, pre-visualization, depending how much time they spend with it. 
and we try to help you all bring you know the best value in, in Unity ultimately. So for modeling and texturing, our solution is called Fuse, uh, and I will do an extensive demo of that, uh, because uh, people need to have different level of details. We uh, introduced a few months ago a, a, an online service called the Decimator that will allow you to take any mesh and reduce down to 10% of the, of the poly count. Um, we also have infused the ability of selecting different texture resolutions, so we kind of uh, we have basically a level of detail system embedded in the, in the tech. Uh, for rigging, this is probably our most uh, uh, famous service and the only one in the world that can automatically rig uh, characters. Um, they are just uploaded to our website. You don't need to use Fuse. It works with any character. Uh, we rig about 12,000 characters a month, just to give an idea. So if basically there was a guy, you know, they are doing by hand, it, we calculate it would take about 50 years like every month, so it's, uh, and I, I can tell you, we are, we are not using like mechanical Turk or that kind of stuff because at the end it takes one minute. So uh, we just had a lot of exposure uh, to very good riggers that uh, kind of gave us their characters and our approach is basically learning from the data. So we learn from, you know, a lot, a lot of, of characters, how to rig them, and then we embedded that knowledge into a mathematical model in our server. And we recently, also introduced a level of detail for the skeleton. That was one of the features that you guys were asking the most. Uh, and uh, because a lot of people are doing uh, mobile games and uh, if the character has full fingers, uh, you know, five fingers uh, per hand, then you end up with like 65 uh, bones and that's, you know, above uh, some of the limits that some engines have. And so with the level of detail uh, in, the, in the outer rigger, now you can go down to 25 and have you know, rigid hands like you, know, you have seen probably many, many times uh, in Second Life, or you know, have all the in-betweens. Uh, and then the, uh, the last step of the process is uh, the animation. So we offer both uh, body animation and facial animation. We have uh, chosen two very different approaches. For the body, it's really easy to standardize uh, what you need. So I'm making a game, first-person shooter, you know, I'll need walking, running, strafing, firing, jumping, uh, idle, with all with different styles, uh, but it's a kind of standardized uh, need. This, I, I swear I'm not doing this. I'm not trying to like flash you with marketing, <laughs> subliminal messages. It's like, I don't know what's going on. Um, I, I should have put like a, our logo bigger, you know, to make sure that it stays in your retina as long as possible. Um, and then for facial animation instead, uh, this approach doesn't work. You know, we can't just build a library of you know, 50,000 different uh, facial expressions because facial animation is acted. So you, it needs to fit perfectly your script and your game. And so we took a different approach and we allow users to stand in front of a webcam and then act in front of the webcam and then transfer that acting to the character. Uh, even a five years old uh, can act in front of a camera, but he probably won't be able to keyframe blend shapes. But you know, the concept of just acting and then transferring that emotion to the character is very easy to understand. So um, that's kind of uh, how we decided to tackle uh, that problem. And so now let's uh, go back to the demo. I'm going to start, I'm going to basically follow this order. So I'm going to start with Fuse, our character creator. Uh, the approach that we follow here is uh, we don't want people to have to uh, pull and squish and scale polygons. That's kind of a little bit too involved and it's, it's too much of a time sink. Uh, sure, they can still do it. They can take our characters and bring them into Maya and Max and do it if they want, but here we want to do something fast. So the approach is modeling by assembly. So now I'm creating a character. I'm going to just pick uh, one of those. I pick a head, uh, and then now I have uh, the choice of a torso. I hope you guys don't mind nudity. I promise I put clothing on as soon as I finish with the body. Um, then let's say we're going to put some zombie legs on it, just to make it a little bit more interesting, like survivor type of, uh, maybe like a zombie that has not been completely beaten uh, yet. And here another uh, female zombie. So now we have the arms. Let's put some quick clothing on, just so I, we don't get, uh, you know, 
Nobody's filing complaints about it. I'm gonna do some quick pants. Uh, okay, so we have created a character. Um, if you just roll over this character with your mouse, you will see areas lighting up. Those are all basically areas that we can customize in real time. So I can roll over and I make the muscles of the arms bigger or smaller. I can uh, change you know, the length uh, of the arms, the position of the, um, of the elbow and so on. So the whole body is covered in areas that can be customized just by dragging the mouse. So it's very, very easy to do. And also a particular attention has been put on the face uh, where you can make alien ears or you can move eyebrows the way you want. You can change the shape of the, of the face. Uh, you can uh, modify you know, mouth position, nose. Like every single possible detail of this character can be customized. We have uh, over 280 blend shapes that are applied to any character. Not only the characters that we have here, the novelty about Fuse is any character that you import inside Fuse will automatically inherit 280 blend shapes that you can use to customize it further. So that's kind of what makes basically us unique. Uh, for the texture of the character, uh, we have integrated uh, the top uh, um, technology, uh, which is Substance. So we are using the Substance SDK inside the Fuse. So now I can show you how I can use it to change uh, the texture of our character. So I can, for example, make our character look older. This is basically just leveraging the, the normal maps. Um, or I can do cosmetic stuff like uh, adding some eye shadows here. Uh, or, you know, lipstick in there. I can choose, of course, the, the color of the lipstick for something a little bit darker. This one's kind of weird. Um, here we go. And then we can also go into um, amount of uh, tan that this uh, character has, you know, how much the survivor has been walking the desert by herself, uh, and so on. We have things like, uh, this is my favorite one, is uh, freckles. So you can add freckles, beauty spots, and everything. And then this is all like 1K map, uh, as you can see, but I can crank it up to 2K map, and then do something even more, even higher resolution uh, for this. There you go. So you can see. And uh, the, the poly count number is written here is 9,000 polys. So we, do, we try to do the best that we can uh, keeping the poly count as low as possible. We also remove polygons that are uh, hidden because the, it, there's no need for those uh, in your game. I mean, if you want to keep them, you can. But uh, by default, we, we remove them. Uh, OK. And so let's add uh, some uh, clothing that goes with it. So maybe some survivor type of pants and maybe like a zombie shirt or something like this. Let's see what we have, something with some blood on, so it looks cool. Uh, there you go. And so I just want to show you how easy it is then to change the texture on those uh, of this clothing. So. I can just click it, and then here I have the main fabric. Um, I can put some crocodile skin stuff, which would be definitely a little bit weird for this type of character, but uh, it's okay. I can go up with the resolution to 1K. You see there's also gloss and specular, uh, all there, normal map. So when you export the character, you get basically uh, four maps uh, all together. Um, I can put something actually more interesting and similar to the character that I'm going to demo uh, later, some trench coat uh, for this uh, survivor. And then I can change also, of course, uh, hairstyle. So let's add uh, something to the head. Let's put, for example, some punk hair. There you go. We also have uh, uh, alpha uh, supported, so um, we have some hairstyle that has uh, alpha in it and some other style that uh, doesn't have alpha. So there's a, you know, there's a, there's a broad selection uh, of that. And then here's an example changing the texture on, uh, on the pants. So the same, the same approach, I can just click on the fabric and then I can go through as many uh, types of, uh, 
of uh, fabric as possible. Uh, you can also import your substance in here. So um, there will be basically um, a tab that is called uh, imported substances in here uh, that I can basically just go through. And then there's stuff with pattern and you know, there's also things that you will never want to wear at a party like this one. I just don't do it. It's be, it will, I know they look cool, but it will be bad. Uh, but for now, let's, I need to change this so I can uh, leave them on. And also we have you know, clothing all, of all kind. You can create your own content and you can add it. So now, for example, um, I could add some extras. I could add this equipment belt that uh, our art director made in Maya. Uh, it was imported. I can even change the texture on that one if I want to. And everything that is imported, basically, we have complete freedom to customize. So it's not just uh, yet another character creator. This is something that allows people to, um, there's a, a completely supported flow to import and export. And anything that is imported automatically plugs into uh, the character creator system. Uh, the, the best example of that is uh, um, a work that we've done with uh, Microsoft that, that came out uh, um, last week. Can show you very quickly. So, we were able to uh, use Kinect uh, to scan our uh, product manager. Uh, Tyler is right here. Uh, we're using a third-party service called Body Labs to uh, extract the, a 3D model uh, from that scan. This 3D model can be then imported uh, inside uh, Fuse, as you can see here is uh, Tyler, and then we can add clothing uh, to it, and then we can also customize, making you know. Muscles bigger, more like superhero. Maybe remove a little bit of the belly. Ah, Tyler, too many beers, you know, and, and so on. And so now we get to a result that's pretty close uh, to the original one. And then we can uh, upload to make some more and then animate and bring inside a, a game. This is a, a Unity scene uh, of a game. So this is a story that Microsoft uh, came out with um, last week. And it's pretty interesting to take uh, the, the um, real world and bring it basically inside uh, inside the character creator and then in, in the game. Um, so before we move to this, let me show you also how we can animate this character. So since I'm uh, running on the wireless of the conference, which is a bad idea, I know, uh, I'm going to lower down uh, the maps quite a bit so we don't have to upload uh, 10 megabytes. I mean, they're pretty, still pretty small, but you know, for, uh, for this kind of uh, wireless uh, standards, I think I want to go a little bit low. But this is showing you basically that every single texture, I can, if I make a mobile game, I just you know, go down, put like 128, 260, uh, 256. Or if I'm making like a really high quality game, I can crank to 1K for the clothing and 2K for the body. So we have this complete flexibility in the, in the process. Once I'm done with this, I press one button, animate, this gets automatically uploaded to Mixamo. And then it will spin around for 40 seconds, and then it will be all uh, fully rigged. Uh, so while uh, this is happening, since we don't have a lot of time, I'm going to fast forward a little bit and show you uh, how this will look like. So here's our character that I created. This was created last night, so it's a little bit different, but it's OK. <laughs> it's the same idea. The, uh, from Mixamo, you just uh, export, uh, download the FBX file, and you drag it in. So it's exactly the same approach. Uh, we also threw some cool shaders on just to give an idea that uh, we could do something that is very different from realistic. Uh, you may have seen the, the Fuse characters being relatively realistic is because we were getting that request from, from uh, uh, our users. Now we are working more on like monster stuff and, and we added more fantasy content. But as I said, this content is very general. So you can scope your own monster head, bring into Fuse. You still get all the clothing working, and you still get all the other stuff uh, going. So, so the upload was successful, uh, despite the wireless speed. And then now she's going to spin for 40 seconds. And then after that, she's going to be alive. Uh, so we'll go back to that in about 40 seconds. And then uh, once you have the character uh, in Unity, uh, we are offering on Mixamo uh, a lot of ways to animate it. Uh, one of those is uh, motion packs that you guys may have seen before. Um, so if we click on uh, animate, uh, we, ha we see that we have some motion packs. So those are basically pre-prepared uh, um, 
sets of motions, they also already have a mechanism blend tree. So once you download them, there's also the link uh, to download the Unity 3D controller. Uh, so you can basically use them like right away and then you can also expand them, of course. So we have about 10,000 uh, animations uh, here grouped in different ways uh, according to different categories. You can search for everything. Uh, we constantly add more and more content. Some of this content was in AAA games. We did the game. We said, oh, can we give you guys a discount and, and put this on Mixamo? They said, that's cool. And so every time we can, we do it, which is like 80% of the time. So we can bring you the top uh, uh, quality uh, animations. And so in this case, I use the female basic locomotion, and I brought that into, into Unity. So here's my character now. Uh, she's going to uh, move around in this post-apocalyptic world that we like. And she's also talking. Hello. So we have uh, the full body animation. She's running around. We just apply the locomotion pack. And then at the same time, I'm also, she also goes through posts, as you can see. That's pretty amazing. Um, she has like super powers, like a post-apocalyptic superhero. Now let's get her closer to the camera so I can show you a little bit of the facial animation. Hey, uh, hey, too far. Damn. All right. She's getting there. Just look up straight on camera. You look awesome. OK, so this is Face Plus uh, operating in real time, maybe a little bit closer. Uh, you can see it's tracking my eyes, left and right, and then my facial expression. Hello. Also, we have all three axes of rotation of the head, one, two, and three. And so you can use this to just create in real time some content that you can apply to the character. So we have uh, Mixamo Face Plus, and then here I can record what I'm doing. You can also record audio at the same time, which is very helpful, because sometimes you're acting, and so you want to record also the audio. So I'm going to do that, so you guys are going to laugh. Um, hello. Welcome to Unite. <laughs> and now it's baking uh, an animation clip uh, for Mechanim. This is all good, and then now we can play. <laughs> so basically, in a, in a few minutes, now let's check where the other lady is. Uh, there you go. So uh, we uploaded from Fuse. She's fully rigged. Uh, we can choose here the different level of details uh, to have uh, no fingers, three fingers, two fingers, or, or one finger. And then uh, we can also admire the beautiful uh, skeleton applied to it that, of course, retargets automatically inside the mechanism. We're all super happy about it. And then we can apply some random jumping animation so we can see how well uh, the mesh is deforming. The shoulder, typically, is really, really hard uh, to, to do. So we have spent most of our time uh, trying to tweak the shoulder uh, deformation because that's usually really hard. Uh, and then here you can also select enable uh, facial blend shape. Every character coming out of Fuse will have 42 blend shapes ready to go into Face Plus. Uh, so it exactly as, as I, I show you uh, over here. Okay, so we have about uh, seven minutes left. So I would like to leave a little bit of time uh, for questions and feedback from the audience. Um, the two new features of Mechanim, the we like a lot are the ability to add uh, behaviors uh, to uh, your state machine. If you're interested, I'm going to talk about this at 3 o'clock in the um, something family hall uh, downstairs. Uh, and then also uh, facial blend tree. So they added a way to blend different facial expression. This takes a little bit of time that we don't have now. But if you are interested, come at 3 o'clock. And then I'm going to talk about that a little bit more extensively. And last. We just came out yesterday with a new pricing. 10,000 of you guys told us, here's how much we want to pay, and this is what we want. We listened and executed. So now you have a monthly plan that starts at 20 bucks a month. What? Incredible. <laughs> or you can have the yearly one, which is culminating with the all access that gives you full uh, access to everything we have, unlimited animations for 1,500 a year. And for that one, there's a discount. Uh, this is Mixamo Unite uh, coupon, 10%, I believe. Did I spell it wrong, uh, Chantal? It's good? All right. 
Uh, and we are also at booth 15. If you want to talk about animation more or just hang out, come by. Thank you, guys. Uh, we are working with NVIDIA uh, on a port to mobile. And also some of our users are, there is a, a beta program uh, for runtime. Uh, we have already customers that are shipping games with it. Uh, so if you're interested in, uh, in uh, that license, just come to the booth and we can, we can talk to you. Can you do desktops at runtime right now? Yeah. Uh, I, I think this is not possible unless you have an infrared camera inside there. But also all your eyes are all like, squished and stuff, so I don't know. It's a, it's a good uh, problem. Yeah, I don't have a solution. And I d actually discussed uh, this with uh, quite a, a few people. So uh, unless the Oculus is transparent or you know, we, we put like an extensimeter on your eye or stuff like that, you know, I don't know. It'll be, it will need some creativity, I think. Yeah, so the question is, uh, is the clothing exported as different meshes? So uh, this is my character, Petra. And then as you can see, we have the bottom, the eyelashes, the hair, uh, hands, head, all separate. So every single item is separate because it's much easier to apply shaders and, and textures. So. Uh, yes. Uh, so if you go to, uh, she's still jumping there, man. She's never tired. Uh, fuse slash import. Uh, this is basically all the documentation about how to create assets. You can download for free the uh, character creator pack that has a bunch of different examples of how to set up a character, a shirt, and so on. All you need to do is model your piece of clothing around uh, one of our standard templates that we provide. And then there are a, a few maps that you have to create that will allow us to know, you know how to attach it to the rest. So there's just 2D, very simple, you know, uh, black and white maps. They also tells us, uh, tell us where to remove the polygons. They are occluded and that kind of stuff. So there's a few examples. Uh, making a map already takes you know, two or three minutes. And that, that's all you need, basically. Yes. How stylized or cartoony do you make your characters to give away? Uh, as, as uh, much as you like. Uh, in fact, uh, Brent, our uh, uh, producer downstairs, has been making funny, crazy characters all the time. Uh, the blend shapes can stretch quite a bit, so you can make you know, super small legs and, and big heads and all that kind of stuff. And then if it doesn't match what you want, you can still import assets uh, inside the fuse, and then you can still modify over. So if you want the gigantic uh, you know, anime head, for example, you could just import that, and you still are able to leverage the outer rigging, the blend shapes, the body, clothing, and all this kind of stuff. Do you think the blend shapes, do So if you have an already rigged character and you're probably into Mixamo, then we are not auto-rigging it. We're just applying, the, we are just retargeting all the animations to it right away. Uh, if you want to have also blend shapes on the face, then you have to go through Fuse. Yeah so, the, the, yeah, so great, great question. Preparation for uh, 3D scans using Kinect or anything? Uh, like, like, or even a higher depth one, like capture dimension. Yeah, so the only constraint for importing is the UV map. You need to use our UV map, which is actually a pretty reasonable one. The mesh can have any poly count, any topology, we don't care. 
just as long as the UV map is laid out the, in the standard way. And we're trying to give this standard to as many companies as possible that do 3D scan. So more and more we'll have the ability of exporting the character that is ready for fuse. Um, so last question. Um, so your, the character that you were showing in the example had separate mesh for the clothing and the body and uh, eyelashes, I think. Um, yeah. Uh, suppose we wanted to do, consolidate this into a single mesh and collapse all those textures into a single texture so we can optimize the performance. Does, does Mixamo support that sort of functionality? Yes, I actually like that you're asking that because we have worked a lot to, there is this uh, option for export, pack, textures, maps, and UVs, and this is gonna squish everything into one. And is 2K the max size for the texture sheets that you produce? 4K. All right, I think we're done. I just want to uh, thank uh, Allegorithmic because they provided a fantastic technology uh, for Fuse. So a uh, round of applause to these guys. And, 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 and that's the perfect introduction for their talk. Perfect so. transition. <laughs> come, come by the booth. <laughs>